Morning, folks. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, cloisonne repair. Uh, if you've chosen cloisonne as your artistic direction, you're going to realize that there, it's very time consuming and you've got a lot of time invested, which is money. And if things start going south on you in about the third or fourth firing, which could be cloudiness, uh, buried cloisons, fried work, instead of usually you just think, okay, it's screwed up. I'll either let it go, which is you don't want to do that, or you can do a repair. I've gotten to the point where I do repairs because I've got pieces that I've fired 10, 12 times, and if they start going bad, there's no way I'm throwing them away. I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to end up doing a series of different repairs you can do on cloisonne, which will combat cloudiness, uh, discoloration, buried wires, burned up wires, and how you can switch them out, how you can change the color. Today, I'm going to go into how you can fix a piece that you have forgotten in the kiln. Now, if you look at these two pieces here, the ones on the left, right here with my, in front of my finger, are pieces that I forgot about in the kiln. I left them in there for like 30 or 40 minutes. I don't know what happened. Uh, I just forgot. This is what they're supposed to look like, these two over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these back over to this. So here we go. I'm going to get started right now. What we're going to do is, even though this, this is burned up and not much use, it's still enamel. Enamel will Put, go right on top of it and you can fire it and it'll be just as good. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to repack this area right in here on both of these with some N1. We're going to repack the blacks. We're going to fire it with the N1 and then we're going to refoil it. So let's get started. I'm going to take some N1 here. I make my own cloisonne wire, and one of the reasons why I tend to make my cloisonne wire a little bit higher instead of a short, stubby cloisonne wire is so that I can do this. Because remember, when you're doing something like this, you're adding a layer. Each time you add a layer, you are decreasing your depth, uh, which and the depth is what gives you uh, this the beautiful uh, look, especially if you're using transparents. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some N1 in here, but I'm going to make sure, look right here, I'm going to make sure that I do not get that uh, enamel going up the cloison wire. I want to keep it away from it. You don't have to touch the cloison wire. All you want to do is get in front of it, just like that. So I'll put that one back. Now these were done with gold cloison A. I hate losing gold cloys, gold foil. Uh, it's just a pain, but it happens. So I'm just I'm putting it in here, very thin, folks, very thin. All you want is enough to put the foil on top of it and fire it again and make it stick. You're not doing anything heavy duty here, and it doesn't matter if it's splotchy in areas or if it doesn't cover. 100%. You just want to make sure that you get it so that most of the cloison, or I mean the uh, foil, will fit. I'm going to get up in these little crevices. These are a little bit more difficult, but I'm just going to make sure that I keep it from going up the wire. Just like that. I don't want it going up the wire because if you do, you have this thing called, I call it cloison creep. And the, the enamel, or the N1, will start going up the wire. And then when you start packing colors around it, and you start sanding it down, you're going to have a nice little halo of white or clear. that just doesn't look good. All right, that's all I need, just a little bit, just like that, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, repack the black. The black I'm going to put, now remember, when I put this N1 in here, I went in kind of dry, 
not real wet because if it's wet it's going to go up the cloison wire if it's dry you can pack it back down on the black i'm going to go in a little bit more wet so that my the water will push that wa that black enamel all the way down into those crevices because when you start sanding these things down the last thing you want is a bubble so i use it a little bit wet you can see that I'm covering the cloison wires you don't want to do that so it's okay at the beginning but then I just take I dry my brush off now I dry my brush off on my shirt you know uh, when I used to uh, coach NFL football I had a brand new quarterback when I was coaching the Saints named Drew Brees you might have heard of him and Drew Brees had this habit of every time he'd get the football uh, when he's in, when he's under the center he started licking his fingers you know and I asked him one day I said now where is that coming from and he said well I noticed in your enameling videos that you're constantly taking your brush and drying it on your shirt so I thought it was kind of like a good luck charm so that's why I do it the reason I do it is because this is a red sable brush. If I if I use the water and everything else, and I want it to, to and I'm bringing the enamel off of the wires like that, I don't want a wet brush. I want a dry brush. So with a red sable brush, when I do this, it takes all the water out, and then I can take it and uh, get the get it done correctly. So once again, I'm putting it on. A little bit wet yeah I remember that job when I was coaching the Saints those were the days I never coached the Saints But I will tell you this, there's nothing more exciting than going to a, a Saints game. Don't do it much since I left the area, but you know, one day I'll get back. Okay, so once again, you can see that I'm using it wet and I'm packing it in between those pine needles. Just like that. Go to the corners, then I dry my brush, and I can take this off. Now watch this, I can just touch my brush to the black and it just dries it right out. Take it off the top of the wire. Take it off the top of the wire. And I'm ready to fire. So I'm gonna go fire these and then we're gonna come right back. So what I'm doing now is I've got to, I've gotta cut my cut foils for these pieces. This is gold, 24 karat gold. And I cut big pieces and little pieces. I've already got a bunch of little ones on there, but I want to go ahead and go straight across and get some of these on here so I don't have to spend hours. Now, when I do foils, when you buy foils from uh, wherever you get them from, Thompson, uh, Enamels Supply, or wherever, the foils are going to come in with in between a little pink piece of paper. Well, I don't like that pink paper because when you cut them, a lot of the times a little piece of that pink paper will be sticking to the back of it. You don't need that. What I do, I take my foils and I put them in between a piece of really nice uh, vellum paper, uh, tracing paper, but nice stiff stuff, the stuff from France. and. Uh, it makes the uh, piece of paper on the back fly away and you don't have to worry about that that thing happening to you so I'm just going to take these and I'm just going to cut these out and that should give me plenty and then I've got these left over and I'm just going to go ahead and they're kind of there we go I just cut this away and they just they just fall right out okay so now I've got this gold 
I use a lot of gold foil in my work now instead of gold and silver. It, I think that the colors react better to the gold. I think they like the gold and I think there's a richness to them. The only colors I use now where I have to use uh, silver uh, is when I'm using blues and purples, but I'm using a lot of gold foil under purples. Uh, and it really gives it a really nice riches, richness to it. I got that idea from uh, uh, Marilyn Druin, who used to use nothing but gold foil under her pieces, and they always had this lustrous look to it. So I've kind of like going in that direction, but I still use silver foil. And if you want to use those, if you want to use pinks and those really bright colors, then yes, the silver foil is the way to go. But don't let gold foil uh, spook you. Uh, it's good stuff. Okay, so I've got my two pieces that I've just fired and now uh, you can see how the gold kind of came back a little bit but not enough to, uh, to go ahead and use. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to take some clear fire and spread it on here and I'm gonna refoil it and I just take my I take my piece of uh, let's show you how I do it real quick and then I'll move it back there we go wrong one this one I take my clear fire and I take my clear fire and I put it on here And then I take my brush and I just touch it to my foil. I'm just going to put these pieces right on my piece of paper so I don't have to travel so far. All I do is just get it wet with a little bit of clarifier on the tip of my brush, just like this. And you just touch the foil, just like that, and it picks it right up. I get the big places first as much as I can. Now remember, when you're seeing me do this, I'm overlapping my foils. Your foil only needs about 10 or 15% of enamel under it to adhere. It's, it's perfectly fine to float on top of another uh, adjacent piece of enamel as long as you've got it attached somewhere. So I'm just going to keep moving this around. So then I take my smaller pieces and I push those up in there. I mentioned how I use high cloison A wire. Now I just I just kind of move this around so I can see what I've got. I mentioned that I use high cloison A wire instead of the short stuff because it also gives me the chance if I want to uh, in my work I can do double layering of foils. Let's say if I paint this entire section here red and uh, reds if you've used reds a lot, they start getting, uh, they don't show depth real well uh, after the second or third firing of red. So you have a choice. You can use reds and then a lot of N4 on top or a pink, something like that. Sometimes I'll go ahead and put the reds down and then I'll take it and I'll coat and I'll put another layer of foil on half of it and then use the same color. So I've got this leveling or a different level of color. But we're not going to go into that right now. I'm putting clear fire in here. Now this is where I'm going to... Uh, start using some triangle pieces. 
and I'll push that up in there as far as I can. I'm constantly searching for the right size foil. It seems like it's uh, Sometimes I lay awake at night thinking, was that the right size foil that I used? What, what am I doing? What am I doing? No, I'm kidding him. So I'm taking a small piece and I get this thing as far as I can up into that crevice, but I'm not going to worry about getting it all the way up in there. Uh, if I want to fill up that little area, I'll use a little, a little bit of black. Black is just this great blending color for transparency gives a really nice shade next to cloison wire and it's a great barrier if you're uh, use a different color like if if I'm doing this piece and I'm using silver and I want to do a pink well as you know pink doesn't react well with silver it'll turn brown so what I do on some of some of these is I go in with a different color against that cloison wire that's okay like a purple that's okay that'll handle the uh, the color the silver it won't react with the silver and then I'll go with my pink next to it you're, you're just you're just kind of tricking uh, the piece that's something that I'm going to go into uh, in the blending video this is strictly repair and I've got to cut some more Ah, here it is. Bear with me real quick while I cut some smaller pieces of gold. I cut too many big ones. That should be enough. That looks good. This one looks good. I still have to put a little bit up inside this one. And we're going to go with that. So, these are my two pieces. They've been refoiled, and now I'm going to take these. Uh, I'm going to uh, put these on my little handy-dandy firing rack. Now, I could put a coat of black on here if I wanted to, but I'd rather just go ahead and get these foils done and just continue from there. So this is what you're going to have now to work with. It's a completed repair. It's going to work out fine. Now, after you've done that, you're ready to continue with your pieces. You're going to be able to do pieces like this instead of having to discard the piece and continue to work. And you're looking at a lot of you're looking at a lot of time invested in these, you know? After you've gotten this done, Then you can finish the piece up, put it in the frame, set your stone, do your matching earrings, just like that, and you're good to go, sell it, 
make some money. So that's, that's how I fix a burned up enamel. I'll do another video on how to get cloudiness out of cloisonne and another one on how to just how to flatten a cloisonne piece because sometimes when you're putting stuff in the kiln especially flat pieces and everything they will start bowing on you but you know you just have to know how to flatten them out uh, to get them straight again but this is this part of this one today and uh, I hope you learned something so we'll talk to you again